Uh, nope. Get that quiet. Carl, good morning. Hello. Hi. And whoever is O two two four zero three, do you have a name you want to use in the class that I can I can put that on your um, screen if you want. Oh, okay. Fixed it. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. How do I get my picture on? Uh, you'll need to be your. You mean your video? If you want to get yeah. your video on, go to your lower. If you're on a laptop or desktop, lower left hand corner of your screen. Go ahead and click on Start Video. Uh, uh, okay. And you should be able to turn it on. There we go. There you Thank go. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's nice to have the video on. You know, we get to see each other and, you know, you never know. You, We've had people bump into old friends. <laughs> Not even realizing. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> We'll give it a few more seconds while we're here. What type of phones do we have today for the Android class? I have a Motorola G6. Uh, Carl, what do you have? Uh, Samsung 8, S8. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Francine. Hi, Francine. Hi, I have an LG K31. Okay. I have an Alex Galaxy A11. Mm hmm And if I any of you are not ten. Note 10. Okay, great. That's a popular model. The Note 10. And if you're not sure, that's okay. <laughs> we usually have a mixture. There's a lot of different ones out there. That's for sure. We're not lacking in different uh, models for Android. That's for sure. <laughs> and I can very few people have it. I have an LG, but I don't know what number. Okay. I got it two years ago. Uh -huh. All right. Well, why don't we get started? I don't hear any more pings of people coming in. We have John in the chat. He's manning the chat. Um, you, see, you, see, you should see a little chat button on your toolbar at the bottom of your screen. John's in there, and he's, he'll be answering questions, too. So if you want to say hi to him, you can go ahead and do that. I want to welcome everyone to get set up. We're seniors teaching seniors about technology. We also have social hours. Today's class, this is the beginner class for Android. We have four different Android classes right now. Uh, this is for beginners or people who just want to maybe you know, learn a little bit more about your phones. Um, my name is Donna. I'm your guide today. I was in the IT industry for over 30 years. I enjoy helping people get over that fear of technology. And this session is being recorded. If you wish to have a copy of the recording, you can do so by emailing help at getsetup.io. And we do not get paid to promote any of the uh, products we're gonna be talking about today. Since we have a lot of different manufacturers, we don't favor one or the other. They're, we're just here for training. So we're gonna to talk today about navigating your phone, uh, looking at the settings that are on your phone, some of the common settings that you would use on your phone and how to find and download apps. 
there'll be some other things too, not just that list. And I already asked some people uh, what type of phone you have. We always have a mixture in here. It's uh, was this, when we say Android, we're talking about the operating system that's running on our phones. Um, you know, just like when someone says I'm running Windows 10, right, on their PC. That's an operating system. And that's what Android is. Uh, it, within the Android world, we have some ma main ma manufacturers like Samsung, LG, Google, Motorola. Those are the, probably the four big ones. There's a bunch of other ones. There's some smaller uh, people in the field. Uh, but the, they, And there's a lot of differences between the different phones. But the one thing we do have in common is we're running the Android operating system. And that's why we call them the Android phones. <clears throat> and our phones, if you look at your phone, take a look at it. You, you may notice at the top of your screen, you have a like an oval, a, a narrow oval patch. That's probably the speaker on your phone. You should see a lens, a front camera. That's for taking selfies. That's the camera that faces you. Probably about the same size of that camera, you're gonna see another little circle and that's gonna be your flash. We have power buttons, which we, I'm sure you're familiar with, the power and the volume up and down. On Samsung phones, sometimes the power button's on one side of the phone and the up and down volume buttons are on the other side. Um, if you wanna do a snapshot, one of the many different ways to do snapshots on our phone, um, is to press down on your volume down button and your power button at the same time, and that will do a snapshot. A snapshot is like it, um, if, you, you, if you're used to Windows, a print screen, where you're going to take a, a, a picture of what's on your screen. So you could have a very interesting, you know, you're, maybe you're reading an article and you just want to save a paragraph real quick that's on your screen, or if there's a picture that comes up or anything like that that you want to save, you would do a snapshot, or I'm sorry, a screenshot. And screenshots are typically get saved in their own directory where all the pictures are stored on your phone. At the bottom of your, your phone, the screen, you may see another little oval circle. Um, that's probably for your if you're gonna lock or unlock your phone with your fingerprint, that's a fingerprint sensor that's on the bottom of our phones. Does anybody do that with their phone fingerprint? Yeah, it's no. it's one of the ways you can do it. Uh, it doesn't work though if you have if you have if you're a person that has sweaty fingers, <laughs> you're gonna have a little problem getting that. It can be tricky to to have it read. Um, other things, of course, we have our headset jack towards the bottom of our phones and our USB charger cable. A little, if you see a little tiny, tiny pinprick of a hole, that's probably your microphone. So if you're ever getting a new case for your phone or a screen protector, you, maybe you want to get a new screen protector, uh, it's uh, just make sure that you get the exact model of your phone because you could accidentally cover up, you know, a, uh, a microphone or a camera and you can have blurry pictures or the sound's not going to be right. So it's good to be cautious with that. So uh, any questions so far anyone has? Uh, Donna, this is yep. Francine. Hi, Francine. Hi, did you say way in the beginning that this, uh, this is only my second GSU class? Oh, so did welcome. you say that? Thank you. <clears throat> did you say that if we wanted to get a recording of this class, we should send an email? Yes, send an email to at mm -hmm. getsetup.io. Yes, that's correct. And we just give them the title and your name yeah. and the time, and then how do we? Do They'll they send you a link. They'll oh, send okay. you a link to it. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Francine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So when we talk about navigating our smartphones. Let's take a look at our, I'm going to bring my phone up here. My phone's going to show up on the right side of the screen. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I've got a Motorola G6. Um, when you're looking at your screen, there's the home screen or the home page. That's the page that your phone 
when you first turn it on, whatever you do with it, it comes always comes to that same page and that's your going to be your home page. You might have a clock on your page. I have a clock and some weather reporting here. Um, the Google Now bar sometimes shows up. The, the, this is where this white bar, this white oval bar, they call this the Google Now bar, um, where you can, you can search on the internet. Uh, you'll see other icons down at the bottom of your screen. You will see, and some newer phones might have this turned off on Android. This is, they're starting to do that on newer phones. Um, you'll have navigation bar um, buttons at the bottom of your screen. The circle is the home button. So wherever you are, like I'm going to take my phone, I'm going to wander out to another page on my phone. When I hit that circle at the bottom, my home button, that brings me back to my home page. So if you're ever wandering around on your phone, not too sure where you are and you want to get out of it, just click on that home button and that will take you back home. Um, we do have multiple pages on our phones. You just saw me, I, I, I swiped to the left of my phone. I have, excuse the mess of my phone. <laughs> it's pretty messy. But I can scroll to other pages that I have on my phone. There's a left page. Some phones have a left page. Mine is some type of a news feed on the left side. Some models may not have a left page. It depends on your phone. The left page has been like one, one time I had a phone, the left page was all Amazon apps. <laughs> yeah. So it really depends on your phone, you know, what that left page is. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And if, for instance, on my phone, if I were to, sh I, can, I have the option to shut off the left page, but it doesn't become a usable blank page. It just goes away entirely. So <laughs> it just depends on how your phone works that. So we talked about the home button in the set down at the bottom. To the left or right of the home button, you'll see a little arrow, the back button. This just takes you back one step from where you last came from. Just like when you're on a browser and you click on the back button to get back to the previous page. Same thing with this. It just takes you back. Um, Sometimes if you're in an ad, if you're playing a game and ads running, sometimes hitting on that back button might pull you out of an ad a little bit earlier. You can always try it. Opposite the, the back button, there's a third button. It looks like a square. It could also be vertical lines on your phone or horizontal lines. <clears throat> I don't That's have the, any of those on my phone. I only okay, have yeah. the line underneath, the circle and the three lines and the arrow. Yeah, you don't have those. Yeah. Bottom. That's okay. Some models don't have that. Uh, is your phone fairly new? No, it's like probably, I don't know, a year maybe. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they've started on some models not having these buttons. So that, that's okay. Um, I, it, for people who do have them, if you see the square or the vertical lines or the horizontal lines, that's your recents button. If you click on that, that's going to show you what apps you have open, which I don't have any. Let me open up a couple apps here so I can show you the screen. Uh, and what kind of phone do you have, uh, Adriana? A A Adrian? I have a Galaxy A11. A11. You might be um, using gestures on your phone to, no. to go back or something like that. All right. So the, uh, the recents button, when you click on it, you're going to see what apps you have open. I, I just opened up three apps on my phone. You may find that you have several open. You can see them in the background. If I click on an app, it's going to bring it to the forefront, and then I can work on it. I can click on the um, the recents button again, which is the square or the vertical lines, and put it back in the background. So you can switch back and forth from different apps. 
Um, you might see a clear all. If I go, for instance, on the to, to the far left on mine, a clear all will show up. It could be on the left, could be on the top, could be towards the bottom of the screen on your phone, depending on the model you have. But that's where you could clear out all the apps. It's Has anyone find a bunch of apps open? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes you're surprised at how many you might have open there. But that's how you can clear them out. You can just do a clear all. If your phone, you know, our phones are like little computers. And sometimes they get sluggish or start acting funny. If that ever happens to your phone, that's probably an indication that you should probably restart it to kind of clear out the memory and get things running more efficiently again. And, and one thing it will do is clear out these, these um, apps that you have open. On my phone, I can, um, if I was, let's say I have, I have these three apps open on my phone. Let's say I want to close one, but I want to keep two open. I can on my phone and some of you will be also be able to do it is put my finger on this app and swipe up. It's like pushing a piece of paper off the table, just swiping up, up to the top of your screen. And that will make the app disappear. Other phones you may see in the corner of the app or towards the bottom of the app, a little close button, something like that. So on my phone, I'm just going to swipe up and it's gone. So now I only have two apps open. So you can manipulate and change what you have open as you're working on your phone. Any questions about that? All right. <clears throat> Let's talk about the favorites bar, which is above the navigation bar. And it looks like, um, you, well, you should have, I have different, I, uh, for instance, the icons I have on my phone are the phone texting, getting on the internet with uh, Chrome, mm -hmm. Google Photos, and camera. This bar on some of our phones can be customized. If you have a phone, uh, you know, some of our Android phones are locked phones. They could be a locked phone. If you get your phone from AARP or cons I think it's Consumer Cellular One, uh, some of those phones are locked. They, they, they really lock it down and you can't make very many changes. So be aware of that if you happen to have one of those phones. Um, but you can always, you know, use the time, take a look at, you know, what your phone does. So this favorites bar, like let's say, I, I want to take uh, Google Photos, which is the circle, the white circle with the pinwheel. Let's say I don't want that there anymore and I want to grab Facebook. I want to put Facebook there. So the way I would do that, and by the way, you don't have to make any changes on your phone. You can just watch, you know, do, do what you're comfortable doing. <clears throat> so if I was going to move this icon, I would press down with my finger and I'm going to feel this little thud under my uh, finger. Uh, Samsung people, your your uh, icon starts jiggle. It'll jiggle. Then then I can drag it out with my finger. I'm just going to drag it out to the screen here where it's empty and drop it. Drop it meaning get take my finger off it, and it will just um, set itself on the page. Now I want to grab Facebook is right next to this icon, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press down with my finger, and then I'm going to drag it over to the bar and drop it in this empty spot that was left. So you can customize these if you have the kind of phone that will let you do it. You are able to do that to, to make changes. If you, if you have something that's maybe sitting on that bar that you never open up, you can always put something else there. Questions, anyone? All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about icons. <clears throat> I have this Candy Crush saga. It's a game. I have this on my phone. I just want to show you for demonstration purposes that you can move icons around. If I press down on Candy Crush, I can drag over to the previous page and I can drop it on that page. Just let it go. What if I just want to get rid of it? I don't want it on the page anymore. Maybe I'm organizing my page to something else. 
On my phone, I can swipe up. So what I would do is press down on the icon and swipe up to the top of my screen and it will disappear. Other phones, you might have to hit a little X that might show up near the icon that says to remove it from the page. So I'm going to press down and I'm just going to swipe up. Whoops, that was a miserable swipe up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a flick. So I swiped up and now it's gone. But it's not really gone. All I did was remove it from the page. If I looked at my app folder on my phone and also many of yours, if you swipe up from the bottom of your screen, you'll find your app folder. It's where all your apps are stored. Candy Crush is right here. It's still on my phone. I had just moved, taken it off that page. Let's say I want to bring it back on that page. All I would do is in my app folder, I would press down on Candy Crush, dra start dragging it out, and then I can drop it on the page. So now it's back on the page. If I were to look back in my app folder again, looking there, it's still there too. You're, you're, you're not going to be able to drag apps out of your app, app folder. Your app folder shows you what you have installed on your, on your phone. <clears throat> when I had pressed down on that Candy Crush, you may have noticed, and you, you'll, if you press down on one of your icons on your phone, you may see this too. A thing pops up, a little menu. You might have more than, I just have app info. Your phone might show a couple of other things. Some of them do. But if you click on app info, mm -hmm. this will give you information about the app. <clears throat> oh, one of the first things you see is uninstall. So if there's an app <laughs> you want to get rid of off your phone, uninstall is the way to do it. And at and then once you do take it off the phone, it will be gone out of your app folder. It will no longer be on your phone when you do uninstall. The only way to get it back, you'd have to go back to Google Play Store and um, install it again onto your phone. There's no notifications. You'll see notifications in this menu. Every app that you have on your phone is going to do some kind of notification. So they'll tell you sometimes, like, we just upgraded to 5.3 <laughs> or something like that. You'll probably get those on your phone. Um, if you have, let's say you have a yoga app. If you had a yoga app on your phone, it might give you a different yoga pose every morning. Or a meditation app, maybe it would give you. You know, or maybe you have a Bible study map, and then it would give you a different Bible verse every morning. So you might have something like that, and you're fine with that. But then you, some other apps, they're just telling you stuff that you don't really care about. And what happens is it, when you're looking to see what phone calls you missed, what text you missed, they're getting in the way. They get in the way. You just see those notifications, and you, they annoy you. Well, you can turn them on or off. I have show notifications for Candy Crush. I have it off because this is an app that will notify you <laughs> every day. <laughs> I Just about. So off is gray on our phones. On will be a color. It's blue, uh, kind of a blue on my phone. It might be gold on another phone. But if it's got some type of a color here, it's on. Off, you click on the little dot. It will off will just go gray. So if you don't want to get notifications from an app, this is the way to silence that app. It's going to still do its updates. All that stuff's going to still happen, but you're just not going to hear about it all the time, especially if it's stuff you just don't care about, that it's, you know, has went to the next level or something like that. Other items you can see uh, about an app in this area is the storage. How much space does an app take on your phone? If you're getting tight on storage, uh, you can start looking at the apps that you don't use very often and see how big they are. Get rid of those the big ones there that uh, are taking up a lot of space. 
And data usage, if you're worried, some people are worried about how much data usage of particular app uses well this is where you can take a look and see um, if it's you if the app that you have is using any of your data anybody have any questions about that since we we're talking about moving apps around you can make folders you want to organize this is something I really need to do on my phone. It's really bad. You take one app and put it on top of another app. It's going to make a folder. So if I take Candy Crush and I, let's say if I drag it over to Instagram. And right on top, if I let go at this point, they become a folder. I click on this folder. It doesn't have a name. I can call it something. Maybe I want to call it games, something like that. I can put in a name and then it will be, you can put in all the games you have. You could, could be tax documents. It could be anything. If you're doing a lot of work on your phone, you have, you know, if you're um, working, you can save documents, different types of documents in different folders. You can create these type of folders. If you want to get rid of the folder, all you have to take, do is, Click that, uh, press down on one of the apps and drag it out, and that will remove the folder. We most of us should have a Google folder. If you go to your home screen, looks like uh, right in the towards the middle of my screen, it's, it has a little G, a little M right here. You click on it, it's a Google folder. It shows up. Do they might have this one. I do. It's pretty common. Um, our phones are pretty are very tied to Google. So this folder is not something I created. This is something that they Android put on the the phones. Um, you, interesting thing is, I had someone in my class. She had Google Calendar and she wanted to add it to this folder and wouldn't let her. <laughs> I don't think it's a folder. You you can't do anything to this one. Um, but it is handy. It has all the Google apps all in one place. So you can find, you know, your Google Maps for navigation, YouTube, your Gmail account, Google Drive, where it says Drive. That's how you get to your, your cloud. That's the Google Drive. We have classes on just about everything that I see on the screen. I think we do. <laughs> they just added a Google Duo class. Does anybody use Google Duo? Yeah. Now, can you tell us what it is? Yeah, well, you know how your your iPhone friends, we all have iPhone friends, <laughs> they have FaceTime, right? We can't do FaceTime. There's no FaceTime app for Android. But Google Duo acts just like FaceTime. It's just a little video um, app. You would open it up and select one of your contacts. And then as, if, as long as they have Google Duo on their phone, you'll be able to see them face to face. It just works just like FaceTime. I think, Ollie, do you have it? You, you use it, right? You want to let us know how you use it? If you don't mind. You'll have to unmute yourself. There you go. There's, there's a link on your phone that says Duo, and you just press the Duo on there. They Sometimes they have to send you a request. My kids use linked me up with Duo, but you push the Duo button and, and it has a button where you connect and um, you can see their faces. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice little app. Mm -hmm. um, that's and, I my granddaughter. Yeah, that's nice. That must have been really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's on all the Android phones. We all have it. And a little tip, those iPhone friends of yours, they can run Google Duo on their phones. They just have to go to their Apple App Store and they have to download it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no excuses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they can do that. So yeah, it's a nice little app. We do have a new class on it. So if you're interested in learning more about it, I encourage you to take classes. We have classes, I believe, now on all of these Google app apps that are out there. So yeah. if you're ever curious, um, go take a look at the uh, getsetup.io website. 
do you can there's a search bar you can type in the search whatever you're looking for and you should be able to find the class but yeah it's a it's a nice little um mm -hmm. just a free video um, app to use Help all right what would you say ollie I said it helps you see your loved ones if you can't get to yeah. see them, yeah. you know, because I, I can't go to everybody's house. But if I've got a link with my duo, I can see them. Right. And the nice thing, too, once you do set up a call with someone, the next time you just click on their name, it's already there and set up. You just go so you don't have to think about it. So it's a nice little app to use and it's free. All righty. Uh, any other questions anyone has? All right, I'm gonna move up to the top of the screen. The top of the screen, we have our status bar. And this status bar, yeah, towards the right of the screen, you will see, look at my slide here. Towards the right of the screen, you will see statuses such as your Wi-Fi connection, how many bars you have for your data, what uh, state your battery is in, how charged it is. And then on the left side, that's going to be notifications from apps. If you missed a phone call, uh, if you missed a text or an email, you should get little icons that show up on the left side. These are more, these need more of your attention when they show up on the left side. If you swipe down, from the top of your screen on your phone, you should see your notifications. What calls you've met, you've missed, anything like that should show up on the screen. So for instance, I'll bring my phone back up. If I swipe down from the top of my screen, I should have my notifications. <clears throat> the notifications are this box, this big box right here. I have some notifications. And then the box at the top is quick settings. We're going to talk about those in a second. If you look at your notifications towards the bottom of the box, you should see a clear all. You can clear them after a while. If there's a lot of them. I'm going to clear mine. That's a lot shorter now. There may You may also see a manage notifications. It's kind of light. It's on the, it's uh, for my phone, it's off off of the white page the white page it's on the the blue it'll say manage notifications if you click on that this is where you can see like my weather app eight minutes ago gave me a notification about weather if there's an app let's say you get a notification and you don't like that notification anymore you could just quickly go to that manage notifications and you could turn off by clicking on the dot, you could turn off the notification so you won't get it anymore. It's a great way too to catch an app. If you don't know, some, I've had this happen to me one time. I kept getting this notification. I wasn't sure what app it was. <laughs> and the minute I, one day I saw the notification show up, showed up and I immediately went to manage notifications at the bottom left here, immediately went in and I shut it off. <laughs> I figured out finally what app was doing the notifications. So you can, you know, that's a good way to catch them too in the, in the act. Donna. Uh huh. Uh, it's Francine. Hi Francine. Um, hi. I just swiped down and I looked at my notifications, which I didn't even know how to do until you just said it because I oh. just bought my, this smartphone and oh, yeah. the manual is 155 pages. So I'm very happy to be taking this class. I know those um, manuals will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I have something here that says update available, one download available, and it's from the update center. I'm not going to press it now because I don't know what it's going to do. Right. But yeah. Is that a update from who? Google or LG or does, how yeah, do I does, know? It, does it say who it's from? It just said so, update center. Yeah. It says update center. Yeah, let me see. I'm gonna, I'm going to just do a quick Google here. This is what I usually do. You have an LG, and then I'll just say Update Center. Let's see, I think this might be something with LG. How do I update? 
The people don't like it. LG's update center has been spectacularly awful. <laughs> this, is, this was that's a year ago. Yeah, it looks like the, it's a it's part of an LG phone. The update center. So what it is, it's just telling you to update your phone. Um, all of our phones, you do get updates from time to time. You'll get a notification. It's a good idea to do it because every time the manufacturer is sending you an update, there's probably new security features. And, you know, they, they just make it better. Hopefully <laughs> they make it better. Um, okay. So if it says, if it says update center, that means it's an LG update. Right. Yeah. And it's safe for me to download. Exactly. It. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Thanks, Donna. Because that's what I do. If I'm not sure on my phone, I always, I put in my, like I have a Motorola G6. So I'll type in Motorola G6 in Google. And then right next to it, I put whatever I'm, whatever I'm curious about or don't know about. And then that will give you the information on your phone. And uh, you mean like uh, just general Google search, right? Right. Yep. Yep. That's like yeah. what right here. See my screen. I just yes. went into Google and I yeah. said LG update center. And then it shows you all kinds of inf information here about the, there's even a community forum here for LG, LG oh, users okay. where right. people, chat about LG. So you can find a lot of different things that will come up when you do that. Okay. When you enter a general search like that in Google, do you go into incognito first? So you then don't get a bunch of cookies about smartphones and such. Uh, I, you can do that if you want to. I half the time I don't, I, I do so many searching all the time. I, yes. you know, but yes, you could do inc incognito would uh, stop some of that. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And you might have seen uh, Francine also the the clear. You can clear the notifications when you if you if you're done with them, and you can manage your notifications. At the when you swap when you did the swipe down from the top of your screen, you may have seen five or six buttons at the top yes. of your phone. Those yes. are your quick settings. And put your finger in between the, uh, like say the middle two here and pull down again with your finger. And that's another screen that pops up. It's like pulling down a shade. <laughs> this is the quick settings or the quick panel. If you're a, a Samsung person, you may be able to swipe with your finger to the left. And there might be another page. I have just a few. You're not gonna match my phone, by the way, unless you have a Motorola. Um, so, you know, look more at what your phone is saying than necessarily what mine's doing. Uh, but you may have a bar. Uh, if you see a bar like this, like yes. I have on my phone, this you can quickly adjust the brightness on your phone, on your screen. Let's say you sit down and you start looking at your phone. And you're like, oh, I need more. I need my screen brighter. You can just swipe down from the top like we just did. And you can adjust that brightness real quick on your screen. Uh this is the quick setting. So, you know, these are the items that are most likely you need them right away. <laughs> like your setting, let's say Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi signal is this left one at the top. It, um, the one that says Geek Girl on my phone, that's the Wi-Fi symbol. Sometimes you have to go turn Wi-Fi on and off. You would be able to do it here. Or Bluetooth. Bluetooth is another one. Let's say you just, you know, turned on your Bluetooth speaker and you want to attach to it, you would come under Bluetooth and turn Bluetooth on and attach to that speaker. Or you just got into your car and you want to listen to your music from your phone over your car speakers, you could turn on Bluetooth and connect to your car. Do not disturb. This is a symbol that has the dash. This dash is in the middle of a circle. Do not disturb, put your phone in a silenced mode, like I have it on silenced right now. So if I get a phone call, it immediately just goes right to voicemail so I don't disturb my class. So do not disturb is a setting you can put on your phone if you just want your phone to be quiet. Donna, Flashlights, yep. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, it's Francine. For the Bluetooth, if we plug earphones in, are we supposed to enable Bluetooth or does it matter? Uh, if it's the the ones with no wire, those are usually Bluetooth. 
Yeah. Okay. I only have the wired. I prefer that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, the wired ones, you, you're not using Bluetooth. You're just attaching physically. Thank you. Um, we all have flashlights in our quick settings because that's a, that's another one. Suddenly it's dark and you need, a you need light. You just swipe down from the top and, and click on your flashlight and you'll be able to use your flashlight. Um, mobile data, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're traveling in foreign countries and you're worried about getting hit with big bills, you can shut off your mobile data. Airplane mode, if you're on a plane and they say put your, your phone in airplane mode, this is another place where you could quickly go to airplane mode and do that. Airplane mode shuts off the external communications that your phone has. For instance, on my phone, if I turn on airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and mobile data, the three of those, are going to shut off. So I'm going to turn on, and then they're off. If I turn off airplane mode, then the three will just go turn, they'll turn themselves back on. So that's what airplane mode is. So yeah, you can take a look. I have a, like I have a system update button if I want to check for system updates. You'll have different ones on your phone. But again, the, this is an area where you're, these are the apps that are most likely you're going to need to access for something that you're doing with your phone. So they just put these in a quicker quicker area to find than to look in settings. Donna? Mm hmm uh, this is a very useful screen. Can you remind me how you got here to the quick apps? Sure can. So go back to your home button, your home screen. You're going to swipe down from the top. And what you see is a split screen. You see the quick settings at the top, and then you see your notifications at the bottom. Yes. And so to, to, to see all of your quick settings, you're going to, at the top section here, you're just going to put your finger here and pull down where that little dash is, there's a faint little dash. Just pull down from that screen and you'll see all the settings. Oh yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> Anyone have any other questions or anything? All right, let's talk real quick about the Play Store. This is where you can get your, find your apps. The Play Store, it has a little icon. It's, it's, a, it's a pyramid, really. It's a 3D pyramid. It's got a blue on it. It says Play Store. When you click on that, it brings you into the Play Store. Millions of apps. They have literally millions <clears throat> of apps of everything you can think of. There's a search bar at the top. You can go ahead and... Uh, if you're looking for, a, you know, let's say you want a new calculator, you could, you could type in calculator and see what kind of calculators they are, there are. Or if there's an app, you're, you're a specific app you're looking for, you can put the name in. Like in this example, I'm looking for Kindle. I would type in Kindle in the search and then the Kindle app would show up and I'd be able to click the install button to install it. I'm going to bring my phone up here. I'm going to open up Play Store. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see games, apps, movies and TV, books. So they have different categories. If you're looking for a specific thing, you can look by category. Uh, the key with, um, like let's say you wanna do some knitting. I put in knitting and now all the knitting apps come up and crocheting. So really, you could search for anything and see what comes up. They really do. I think there's an app for everything. <laughs> so let's say I click on this Knitting Genius. You want the downloads. This one has 100,000 plus downloads. That's good. You, you don't want it to have two downloads. You don't want to be the third person. You, you want people to have tested this app so you get a good idea how the app works. The reviews, that's 4.3 out of 5 out of a scale of five. When you're looking at the pictures here of the app, this is a menu feature that slides to the left and any app you're in, when you see this, 
you, you will take your finger and slide to the left and you can see more of the pictures of the app. You can click on one of them to make them bigger. And then you can just with your finger slide to the left and take a look at each of the screens to see what the app's gonna look like on your phone. You know, because sometimes you don't like the way people have done, you know, done the formatting. And then you can keep going, take a look about they sometimes they'll tell you a little story about how the app came about. You can read that. There's the reviews. You want to see them more fives than anything else. That's pretty good. So most people like this app and you can come and read what people say about the app, what they like, what they don't like. Um, and then you can make your decision whether you think this app is for you. And if it is, you click on install and that will install the app. It'll take about a minute or so. There'll be a little circle that shows up and the circle, will. there'll be a line going around in the circle and you'll see the progress that way, the little line as it goes around the circle. Donna, uh -huh. um, this is this is Pat Fitzpatrick. Um, Hi, Pat. Can you see something? I'm looking at where you are now. Can you say something about this QR and barcode scanner? Uh, what What do you want to know about it? You want to know what it is, or no? I kind of know what it is. Is that just something you can install and then use it when you go to the store and stuff? Yeah, yeah. They do have some apps for it, but your phone, all you have to do to, and when you see those, um, and she's talking about, let me do show you an example of what it, what they look like. Um, I have two of them. One's kind of square, yeah, two different ones. Yeah, you're talking about the QR code? Yeah. So I'll bring a picture up. This thing, you, you, see, these, you see these things everywhere now, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, and then you see them at the cash register, you see them at the restaurants. <laughs> there, all you have to do to read one of these is open up your camera and point. You don't take a picture of it, you just point your camera to the code, and then it's gonna pop up. And um, there'll be a link to click on, or something like that. And you'll be able to, you know, eat some. If you're at a restaurant, they'll want you to go to a menu. If you're at, like I, I know I, in Walgreens, I always see there are codes at the cash register. If you click on that, they'll, they'll send you somewhere to get coupons, you know, different you know, things like that. That's what they are. So do you need to install this, one of those things on your phone or just? No, you just, to read them, all you do is open up your camera and point it right to the code and it should read it. Your camera will read it. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to take a picture of it. You just have to point to it. I'm, I'm going to see if my phone can read the code that's right here. Yep, there it is. Oh, okay. Oh, it just read a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably ads. Let's see. Here, I'll let me get my camera. Let's see. I'll show you because I've got it up on the screen right now. So I'm going to. Oops, I'm covering my code. I'm going to drag myself over here. So here's the code. So I have my phone up. See, look at, see those bubbles? Yeah. And all you do is you just, it's reading all of them. You just press on it and there'll be like a link to an email, uh, to a website or something like that. All right. Thank you. Or if you're at a restaurant, what will happen is your, the menu will pop up because they've been doing that now with COVID. Yeah. They don't have menus at some of the places. Mm-hmm. That's all. So that's all you have to do with that. You don't have to take a picture. I know some people think, oh, I have to take a picture of it or, you know, it's just it's just the uh, the way the camera lenses work on our phones. They can read bar barcodes. <laughs> they have this little kind of a laser in them. So. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, let me find my slide. Here we go. All right, so that's the Google Play Store. Any questions about that? You know, have fun with it. Go search for something, whatever your hobby is, and see. You never know. You might find an app that's really helpful. Um, and, you know, if you don't like the app, you can always uninstall it. It is a legitimate thing. You don't have to worry about that. It's unnecessary.
Anna, ever since I pressed Google Play, it's been updating Google Apps for minutes now. Is that right? Oh, yeah. It's Yeah, it probably is updating. If you have a bunch of updates, it might have started running them. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about our settings. The settings button on your phone, it's a little gear. It's got, uh, mine has green around it. Yours might have blue or silver or gray. Depends on your phone. When you open up settings, this is going to be your settings area for your phone. You should have a search box at the top. This is going to be very handy for you to have that search box. If you don't have the search box, you might have a little, the little magnifying glass icon thingy. If you click on that, that'll probably let you search. Um, you may be talking to people and they mention some feature they have on their phone and you're not too sure where to find it. That's what the search box is for. You can search in there and the phone will tell you where, where it is. When we look at settings, you know, our, our, our phones are tiny little computers. They really are. Um, you'll see all types of settings. So just take a second to look at what's, you know, what your phone has. Usually this, our settings start off with, you know, um, the same icons we saw in quick settings, your network, your internet, Bluetooth, those are going to be the first things that show up in settings because that those are the um, settings that people are mo most apt to go change and need to make changes to. But once you get past the internet and um, network and all your Bluetooth settings, then you will see things like the applications and notifications will start showing up where you can make changes there. And then battery, display, sound, storage, all these different sections that have to do with your phone. So there'll be a security and location section probably on your phone. You know, when you're setting up your, uh, to lock your screen with a password or anything like that, you have to have some type of security section. Accounts you know, different accounts that you have for different apps. You'll see a Google section probably, and that takes care of all the Google account stuff with your Google account on your phone. You might see an accessibility section. That's where you can find apps and help with eyesight issues, hearing issues, dexterity, anything like that. Um, you can find different apps in there. Donna? Uh, yeah. It's Francine. Um, under display, under my settings, I enabled auto rotate. Uh -huh. But when I turn my smartphone horizontally <laughs> in my hand, it doesn't change. Uh, try shutting it off, maybe. Okay, I won't do that now, but next time I'll try it. Because yeah, I will, auto I rotate. Did I already set the ro auto rotate several times, and when I hold it horizontally, it's not complying. Yeah, auto rotate's kind of an odd one. I know on my phone, um, my phone will really drive me crazy with rotating, and I'll put the auto rotate on, and uh, sometimes it works, and sometimes it, it doesn't stop that. It's okay. It's, yeah, I think different phones might handle it better. I Donna, see. Some apps yeah. don't let you uh, rotate. So, right. um, so Francine might be in an app that it doesn't. There's some apps that will not let you rotate, even though you got your auto rotates on. I found that. Yeah. Good point, Carl. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank it will you. depend on the app, the phone. I mean, I would think if you're in the settings mode and you enable auto rotate and then you turn your phone horizontally, it would do it. But because settings really is, I mean, I don't think of that as an app. That's a default for every smartphone. Yeah, but Francine, some apps, I've tried it. Some apps will not let me, even though it's on, it, it, it'll it never let me rotate. Okay, well, I'm very yeah. happy that you told me that because I said it a couple times and it didn't do it. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, I know I have some games that always are always in like a landscape mode, shall we say, the long way. They never show up the other way. I mean, there's okay. certain apps, they just design them that way. All righty. Thank you, folks. You're welcome. And then other things towards the bottom of your settings, you may see a system section and or an about phone. You know, when you're 
talking with someone and they start asking you, well, what kind, what version of Android do you have? And all this technical stuff about your phone, that's the area to go in and look. And towards the bottom, you will have an, some type of a help. Well, all our phones should have some type of help at the very bottom of, of settings where you can find little troubleshooting topics and how to's and different things that your phone will have where you can look up. And that will be specific to your model and your manufacturer. What's what you have in there. So when we talk about, we like, for instance, settings, we talked a little bit about the network and internet settings on our phone through quick settings. We talked about Wi-Fi, turning Wi-Fi on and off, airplane mode. In your settings, they live in your network or internet section of your settings. Um, or connect if you have a kind sometimes it's, it's under connections, uh, connected devices or Bluetooth. This is where you can get into Bluetooth if you want to pair to something um, like your car or a speaker or a headset, something like that. You would click on pair new device and that will search for devices that are near it that have Bluetooth turned on. And then once you find your device, you can click on it and it will pair with it. A lot, of, a lot of people's hearing aids now pair to their phones to download data. Uh, apps and notifications. An area where you can uh, control your apps, uh, usually in your on your phone, like notifications. We talked a little bit about notifications earlier, where you can turn on or off notifications from apps. You can decide, um, you may see a setting on lock screen on your phone. You can set it to have your notifications show up on your locked screen so that when you get a notification, you don't have to unlock your phone. You can just glance and see what it was, you know, if it's, uh, you know, maybe it's a phone call that's not that important, then you can go about with what you're doing and deal with it later. You don't have to sit there and unlock your phone every time to see who just called or what that last ping was, you'll be able to see it right at a glance. Thank you, America. And um, Donna. Oop, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Francine, I just hit mute. So go ahead and unmute yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, getting back to the lock screen, I did set a numerical code to lock my screen, mm -hmm. but it's, a bit annoying. So if I want to get rid of it, can you tell me how to do that? Yeah, just go back into your security. Oh, and okay. Under the security section, you should be able to clear that. Okay, great. Clear that um, out. I'm looking at my phone. Is security under system or? Under, it'll be probably on its own. Oh, I see it, Donna. Thank you so much. Yeah, most most of our phones, it's on its own. Yes, okay. Where you can set the security there. Um, so under apps and not like your notifications, again, you can set shut notifications on and off. Um, one last setting, I know oh, we're at the end of time. One last setting to uh, um, talk, talk about is app permissions. Um, you can do a search for it if you can't find it. But the nice thing about app permissions, you know when you install apps and you have to um, you have to say yes to everything, right? Or the app won't install. Well, app permission section under your settings, if you can find it, make a note, maybe look for it later. Um, this is where you can look and see what apps have what type of access and you can correct it. <laughs> like if you, if you go under camera, for instance, I can see all the apps that have access to camera, like Zoom should have access, but maybe Candy Crush or something else shouldn't. So you can come in here and you can, in this section, and tighten down on your security to make sure that uh, apps don't have too many permissions. Uh, do one change at a time, always one change at a time, and then test the app to see if it still works. If it still works, then it didn't need that permission probably. Olga, did you have a question? Yes, I just happen to see you have an app called Daily Art. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. I get daily, talking about notifications, I get daily information about art, you know, uh, art 
you know, like Da Vinci or whoever, you know, different paintings and stuff. Awesome. It's nice. I like it. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's all types of stuff out there. Go into Play Store. If you have an interest of something, go go take a look. You might find some interesting things. I enjoy that app. It's kind of nice. You get, you know, every day it just sends me something to read about the art world. Donna? Yeah. Um, when you say something to contact, what's a default? Is it is it your phone or is it your SIM card? Is it your Google? What Or is it the Samsung uh, cloud? <laughs> When, when I save, when I open up contacts and I've got lots and I save the contact, where does it, what's the default? Where does it go? Oh, when you create a new contact yeah. contact and then you save it? Yeah. Oh boy. That's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, okay. Cause you're, you know, you're thinking it goes to the cloud. I would say it, first of all, it saves on the phone. Um, most likely. It doesn't actually, I, I don't know why it doesn't. It I, I don't know. I found contacts to be very uh, difficult. The other, just a little question. Do you also do an intermediate um, Android phone and an advanced Android phone? Yeah, we have it. We have two. Uh, there's an Android tips and tricks class. There's two of them that talk about different, you know, uh, features of the phones. And then we have one called security and safety, where we start, we set up medical ID alerts on your phone, if you were interested in that. Um, and talk about the, you know, security stuff with your phone. Okay. All right. We are sadly at the end here. <laughs> can I ask a quick question? Sure can. On the, under the advanced autofill service from Google, I don't understand. When I click on that, I get a list, but I don't know whether it's turned on or off. What's it called again? It's called Use Autofill with Google. It's under privacy. Oh, autofill is where it fills out your address and all that information. When you go to fill out forms, yes. it'll autofill. Okay. I don't know. If I go to that and I click on autofill service from Google, it yeah. comes up and it shows account, personal information, addresses, payment methods, and passwords. But I don't know what that means. Is it, it, do, I, do I want to use it? I mean, at the top it says use autofill with Google. And if I, if I click on that, it grays everything out rather than... I, I don't know whether I have it turned on or off is what I'm trying to say. What kind of phone do you have? I have a, a Samsung Galaxy A11. I'll do a quick search after class and I'll put it in the email, some yeah, information for you. It comes but, up, it shows my account and it has my Gmail account name there. Mm -hmm. Then underneath it says personal information, addresses, payment methods, and password. But I don't, I don't know what it's auto filling where. It's it's gonna when you go to or if you're on a website and it you know if you're gonna pay for something and ask you for your address your billing address and that type of thing that's the it's it's gonna autofill any any website that you go to and they want to know your name and address it will fill that form for you instead of yeah. you having to type it in that's what it does. And okay. but what about the one Donna, I'm sorry, I, Donna, I'm sorry for interrupting, but please pardon my departure. I have another class. Thank no you problem. So understand. Thank, Thank you for you coming so today. Much. All righty. Bye bye. Um, and so, Adrian, uh, where were you? Uh, what did you go? Do you go under settings? Did you go under settings for the autofill under Google? Yeah. Yeah. Let me back out so I know exactly where I am. Under oh. privacy. Oh, under privacy. Okay. Under privacy, um, if I go down, if I page down a little bit, I, almost towards the bottom, it says autofill service from Google. Oh. Uh, and underneath that, it says save passwords, credit cards, addresses. Uh, yeah, that's that's what it is for. If you want to have that stuff saved ahead of time. And then when you have to form to fill out, it's just going to fill it. It's going to put yeah, in the credit card number. Say, I don't know how to do that when I go to an app and I want it to save it. In other words, um, 
I don't want to have to fill in my password all the time for some of these apps. But I, when I go to that app and I fill right. in my password, how do I tell it, okay, save this now so I don't have to do it again? Oh, that will depend on the app you're using. Um, I mean, you could do the autofill if you wanted to, and that will probably take care of a good portion of the stuff. Okay, but I think I think I have it turned on. The band is blue. Yeah, you will know the next time you go to fill out a form whether or not it fills out. Okay. If it's not filling out, then it's probably not set. Okay. But that's what that will do. That's that will be so that all that information will get put in. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everyone. Sorry we're, we ran over. I <laughs> hope this was helpful for you today. And uh, thank you for coming and for supporting Get Set Up. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Have a great, great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Okay.